Now for today's Wildlife Connection, you're all actually helping us out with this because we are doing a training session. If you have ever come to the zoo and you have seen maybe some of our macaw flyovers, which is place at 10.30 and 2 o'clock, the birds will fly a big loop around Manatee Circle. And what we are looking for is that our macaws stay on the outside of all of these palm trees that you see around these mountains. So that's what we're looking for. Now these girls are really, really smart and they figured out that if they just cut across, it's way faster and it's way less work. So we are working on making sure that they stay on the outside of those palm trees. So we pulled them outside of that macaw time. We're gonna have to clean out right now. It's 9.30 time, but we're gonna focus on that today. Now the reason that I say you all are helping with that is because we can positively reinforce our animals in a lot of different ways. One way is just spending time with them. You can kind of see, as I was standing there, I only said them a couple of times. Spending time with them is one way we can show them we have built a very strong and positive relationship. So we're able to do that. Another way is that food. So don't fall right here. So another way is that food. So we've got some fruits and pellets and even some nuts that they do a really great job. So we're gonna see. She's so smart, she can't, but that's okay because she corrected herself. Now, like I said, we can reinforce them with that food too, but you all can get really excited and that's another way we can show them that they did a good job. to Zoo Tampa, and that was a little bit of a training session. 
with the uh, macaws. With the, with the macaws, the blue, uh, blue and gold macaws, and that was part of a wildlife connection. So it's cool seeing them flying yeah, fly around right and then right over, over your head. head. So stay tuned for some more interesting animals. Yeah. Not the best view, but this is a Milan tapir. Ta uh, ta here. Ta tapir. Taper. Taper. Let's go around uh, Maggie here, so maybe we can get a look at her face. Aww. Hello. Now this animal is uh, mainly found in um, Indonesia, <clears throat> Malaysia, uh, Myanmar, and Western Thailand right there in the map there. Let's see if you can see that in this area. It is endangered. And it mainly eats grass, aquatic vegetation, leaves, buds, and fruits of the low shrubs. Nice habitat for it. Yeah. These horns can go right into their brain and kill them. That's why they gotta shave them down. I'm not gonna even try to pronounce what they are. This is a little bit of information. It's known as a pig deer. <laughs> Sleeping over here in the corner. I think more Asian. How you guys doing in there? They're Asian, I think. Yeah. And it's funny, at Bush Gardens and here at Zoo Tampa, they always put turtles in with the gators or crocodiles or whatever. Look at that. That one's gonna walk right in front of that other one. Look at that foot is right there. Oh, they're gonna kiss. Aww. They're kissing. They're oh. friends. <laughs>
great Indian rhinoceroses or rhinos. Probably another one. Yeah, it looks like these habitats are attached, so chances. Well, I think that might be something else. Uh, yeah, they might have some out at, in the habitat at a time. Why are we going to this one? I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen them do anything but sleep. Yes. <laughs> I feel like that's all they do is Could be very, very much like these are girls and that's a male. That one over there. You know. But yeah, just like they keep uh, the hippos separated at Bush Gardens, they might keep these separated for a reason. Oh, that's a goose, probably. And there's a turtle back there. Mm. Turtle, turtle. There it is. Yeah. One of them. It could be up there too. Yeah. One, two, they just can't get out far. Uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> he's got a piece of paper or something in his wing. Yeah. Yeah, one, two, three. Wow. Hi. That's a different kind of bird. Hi there. <laughs> ah. Just flew right over here. Look. The yellow head. Mm-hmm. Then the crow. Oh look. Oh. Mm, look at that one. Yeah. Yeah, they enjoy their sleep. He's got to be the cutest things I've ever seen. Look at that face. How can you not love a face like that? Another one just popped up. Oh. Got something in his mouth. Yeah. 
tail. Yeah, that one's cleaning the other one's tail. That one got something hiding. And he's eating all to himself. We are heading into the Florida wilds where we may be able to see a panther, snake, a darter, snail kite, scrub jay. Yep, we'll see a whole bunch of things. First thing. It's possibly a red wolf. Oh, there he is. <coughs> uh, he went back into his habitat. Oh, there's one right there though. Let's see who, 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 who do we have here? The barred owl. Hi there. Oh, wow. Hi, gorgeous. And then there's supposedly a turtle, which I don't see the turtle. Florida box turtle. Uh, not in the water either, not that I can see. Yeah, three of the owls in here. In here we got Turtles, a turtle. This is the Gulf Coast box turtle. And a couple of Eastern Screech Owls, one, two of them in there. And one of them over here. <laughs> These two screech owls, Nod and Karen, have their own private apartment because of an eye injury they sustained in the wild. They can't easily navigate, so they. Oh, look at that poor I can't see. That must be Nod. Aww. Oh, missing an eye. How about otter? So they have, they do better in a horizontal Aww. environment. Oh, baby. Yeah. And see, that one has a turtle in it down there. Yeah. Big chickens. we 
they are on our way for an expedition All right, here. guys, let's try this one more time. Are you excited to see some animals? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Much better. All right, before we get you out there, look down at your feet for me. Uh, don't worry too much about the roads. They're a little bit silly on this truck, but seats one and two are going to be on the driver's side. Seats three and four are going to be on the passenger side. You're going to go down to the next available row phone on whichever side you've got there. Once you've got it, you can start making your way down to me. Please watch your step on this big yellow curb and use those handrails. You're heading up those stairs. Alrighty, hello. And yeah, welcome everybody. My name is Jules and I'm with your research assistant guiding you out on your insurance orientation today. Is everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. We're also going to be accompanied by our private self safari driver, Rachel. Can we say hello to my Rachel's going to use her navigational skills to get us through all of these push and turn tunnels with large reserves because it does get pretty bumpy out there. So this is just a friendly reminder to make sure that everybody remains seated at all times. And also let's keep our hands and our feet and everything else you want to keep with you inside the vehicle. We're just going to wait for that all clear from the large control with Dr. Ramos with us and join us today. Well, you're caught up in the easily distracted by shiny things. We're going to head out
we're actually walking one out for you, and then they took the trail camera on us. Now one way that you can help no copy has been in the area. If you look out along the tree, we're about halfway up. Here you see some reddish brown markings. No copies are solitary animals, but they like to mark their territory by leaving their scent behind. So they'll rub their necks along the trees, leave their oil behind. They call to secrete kind of like something from their hose, or they can just pee on everything. Alright. Now hang out back here in this corner. You're going to see a small little antelope. Oh. That's going to be a big diner. He's very tiny, but he's actually full grown. Big diners don't get any taller or any bigger size. It's about 18 inches. So, and then we're going to create by just because you can't even hide all this foliage. Uh. He is spotted and no copy. This is how you know they're real. Okay. And we got have those zebra party pants on. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> but don't let those different parties fool you, because this close to something I'll see this, we were to be able to see this head. If you'll notice he has the box on his head, it's close to something I'll it is a giraffe. Okay, those box on, but he also has that nice 14 to 16 inch long tongue, just like a giraffe. Mm. Now they are solitary, so we're going to let them both live their solitary lives. So we want some more social animals hang out on the savanna. Now right now they're actually socially sleeping, because they do sleep about 20 hours a day. They hang out right about here. African painted dogs. It's actually a trio of sisters, so they're in a the nice little petal puddle here. They're a nice calico color. <laughs> so they like to communicate using high pitched squeaks and chirps. You can only be heard short distances. It kind of sound like a bird chirping. That does help to disguise their voices. Not along with hunting and such large packs, they can very efficient hunters. In fact, they're possibly one of the greatest hunters out there. They do have a hunting success rate about 80 percent. If you were to compare that to a lion, a lion only has a hunting success rate of about 20 percent. So they're pretty incredible. Now, a lot of people also think that they kind of look like hyenas. They do live in the same area, so they are going to have the same coloration to help them camouflage. But hyenas are going to be more related to mongoose and weasels, whereas these are actual canines. So they're going to be more related to the dogs that you have at home. Now we're going to move on to a much larger animal. We're coming up to our rhino night house. Doesn't look like any rhinos are home, but that just means that they're all hanging out by the water and so whatever we see at night house, we also know that we're coming up to base camp of course. So Hush Rod and I work with the International Rhino Foundation. They're trying to monitor all five species of rhinos. And would you look at that? Professor's gone. I'm not surprised. And he took a talk with us. Well, we really need to have a talk with that man. Uh, Professor on the scene again. Everybody can't bored. You were supposed to close away for here, sir, but um, your chair is knocked over, your desk is a mess. It kind of looks like we have left in a bit of a hurry. Um, is everything okay? Over. I'm doing great. I was just checking in on our pack of painted dogs, and I saw big bunches of big big things. They started to chase their prey at 40 miles per hour, and I ran to catch up. Oh. My hat must have fallen behind. Or I might have better luck if I just jumped in my research for field. So I drove ahead. And if I don't crash, get it? Ha 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 ha. Ken I get it. And uh, hey, no, I've got your hat. You just have to make your big Ken Ford, but uh, I'll send Rachel by later to get up for you. Over. Alright, so Professor Ron, <laughs> he thinks he's funny. He did mention something about a crash. I don't think he was talking about a vehicle crash. At least no. I don't know. He might have been talking about a different type of crash. Like a group of rhinos. Because a group of rhinos is called a... Crash. Yeah, you guys are very smart. Go ahead, we're going to find our crash. That's another white rhino. Now the white rhinos are the only social species of rhinos, so they can live in crashes of up to 15 numbers. Here at the preserve, our crash consists of six numbers. They don't communicate using all sorts of various noises. Wheels, so they'll also communicate by using these divots that you see here on the ground. Those are called knitted. Also known as a rhino community bathroom. How that works one rhino will come up and leave a deposit behind. All the other rhinos can come up and sniff that deposit. They're very adventurous, they can even lick that deposit. But by doing so, they can tell exactly which rhino. Over there. Okay. Now hanging out right over here by himself. This should be our one and only male, Mufasa. Mufasa. On average, the rhinos weigh about 4,000 to 6,000 
pounds of mail came from the net. Six thousand a ring. Who will come to hear if he did not get that message? Maybe he just doesn't like to listen. He went six thousand and five hundred. Wow. He's dead, so. Now hang out right over here. First, is she standing up underneath the shade structure? It's going to be one of our mother-daughter parents. The bigger one, that's going to be Kajogo, the mother. And then just next to her is going to be Kane, her daughter, who's about three years old. I'm laying down right next to them. It's going to be Kujo. Kujo does have the longest horn out of our crash. And then last but certainly not least, hang out right over here by the palm tree. The big one is going to be Lake. The one just behind her is going to be her daughter, Jabruba. Ruby for short. Now, one way that Ruby will communicate with her mom right now, just because she's still nursing, whenever she gets hungry, she'll coo to her mom, and her mom will pant back to her. It is adorable. Yeah. Now, I was able to tell all the right ones apart, but okay, not by sniffing those things, because that would be gross. That's what Professor Ron's going to try to have you guys do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. You can tell them all apart by looking at those horns. Those horns are going to be made out of keratin, and that is the same stuff that makes up your hair and fingernails. So they are constantly having to file them down. That's why no two arms will ever look the same. So to file them down, they'll just rub them on anything they can find, like rocks. If you look at the base of the trees, they're all nice and smooth, because they've been using those, but every now and then they get very excited, especially when they see the professor. That's when he gets turned on waiting for me. But, okay, guys, this happens all the time. I almost like every 20 minutes. We should be able to call it just to make sure he's all right. Hey, Professor Ron, this is us. Yeah, we've had a research structure and, and look at the rhinos, took their seats this time. Yeah. Make sure everything's okay over here. <laughs> I'm okay. The rhinos decided to use my wrist personal field to file their home. They got a little overset us, and one of them punctured my tire. Too tired. I went the Two. rest of the way on foot. I must have left my binoculars behind by accident. Yeah. Oh, no. But I definitely did not need them to see the animal up ahead. It is Huge! I'm almost back to the loading dock, so I should see you guys there too. Over! Ten, he four, left his boots behind, we'll too. Hey, sir, avoid those minutes, could you also lift your shoes back here? There's all sorts of piles of communication everywhere. Over. <laughs> all right. All right, so let's head back to the loading dock and see if we can't catch up with Professor Ron over there. We're bound to find him at some point. He said he saw something huge. What kind of animal do you think that might be? An elephant. Elephant! elephant. <laughs> We're going to be taking a shortcut through elephant country. And this guy over here on the passenger side, this is going to be our large African bush elephant. He is our one and only male. Now he does weigh over 10,000 pounds. It's more than his truck and everybody on it. Wow. On it. However, that's actually a slightly smaller size. Pretty tall, 
calls and accommodate all sorts of animals if it absolutely needed to, like the giraffe. Attached to it, you are going to find one of these training yards, which is also where they can come to participate in voluntary training sessions. And I do say voluntary because if the elephants do not want to participate, they do not have to. But through these training sessions, we have been able to learn a lot about all of the elephants, including the fact that there were only two animals that can identify themselves in the mirror. They were able to do that by pressing the dot on their forehead, holding a mirror out to them and telling them to touch the dot. Instead of touching the mirror, they would just reach up and touch their own forehead. They are very, very clever. Now, if everybody does me a favor, take a big whip. Because you're going to smell it before you see it. Welcome. The elephant poop up there! Mm. You guys aren't excited? Now you know what you signed up for? As I said, this will be your job. You're going to say your duty. Don't poop all the elephant poop. You're going to get to 300 pounds of food a day. But then all the grains are digesting their food. A lot of times they come back out looking like it did when it went in. So they can also poop about 300 pounds a day. When you have six elephants, that's a lot of poop. But don't worry, that waste does not actually go to waste. Scoop it up, gather it, and then we'll send it out to local farmers so it can be used as organic fertilizer for their crops. So if you guys are eating it locally, you know where your food thing for it. You can take the elephants for that one. Now we're coming by our giraffe night house. We have four on the side giraffe. Our male was hanging out over by the elephant earlier. You can get a much better view of him out on our walking trail. And back here we do have some three younger females on the side giraffe. Now they are the tallest of the giraffe species. If you look over your shoulder, you might be able to catch a glimpse of a few of our females. They are the tallest of the giraffe species, and they can reach up to 18 feet tall. And we're on the passenger side. We are passing by our Catherine Lauder Children's Veterinary Hospital. This is where all of our animals can receive top health care. And for those animals that are a little bit too big or too tall to fit through those front doors, we also make house calls. So all the equipment that you'll find in there is one last narrow stretch. Just try to keep all hands and feet inside the vehicle as we do. We're going to keep our eyes out for some more air. Keep your eyes out in the bushes. That's where they like to hang out. You might be able to see our large male. These are going to be the lowland Nyala. Now if you see a dark, smoky silhouette in there, that is going to be the adult male. We do have, looks like a female hanging out up ahead as well. And they do experience a type of dimorphism where the males and females look different. So they're more they're all going to be like this light tan cinnamon color that we see with the stripes. The females say that color, but as the males get older, they're going to get much larger, darker, and then grow some nice big horns on there. Now, it looks like over by these logs on the ground, you're also going to find more bay diapers as well. And those stripes on the Lola Nile, that's very similar to the Bongo, so it is a form of camouflage to help hide from predators. But if they ever sense any danger nearby, they will alert each other by flicking up their tail. Turtle! And have a white patch of fur on the other side. Mm -hmm. And here we have some really big rocks. <laughs>
safe travels, everyone. And thanks for visiting the Hafari Preserve. wanted to get a pretzel and uh, well we found out it was an animal pretzel so Maggie said eh. but then I said but it's a butterfly she goes oh okay so she loves eating butterflies <laughs> or at least butterfly shaped pretzels ah. I know the last time we were here we went through Bugtopia but yeah, we'll go through it again. Why not? First, we're gonna come up to some weird looking grasshopper. I think. Please do not bug me. Uh, I'm afraid of him bugging me more than me bugging him. <laughs> the manis. A Madagascar sunset moth. Kind of looks like a butterfly. Oh, look at this. Here we got the Emperor Scorpion. And of course the backyard bugs. Are we like bug so far? Yeah, looks like we got a bumblebee here. Oh yes you do. Do you guys have any favorite bugs? Um, no, not yet, perhaps. No, no. Oh, no. no I'm so sorry. Yeah, we hear that butterfly, and that's it. Oh, I love butterflies, though. Hello, hello. What do we think of our moth over here? Looks like a butterfly. Yeah, it does, right? It does, yeah. 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 Their wings actually change color in varying degrees of sunlight. Isn't that cool? That is. Mm. Oh, I just can't get enough of them. Uh. My favorite, though, is the bumblebee. I don't know if you can tell or not. Yeah. They're just my favorite. They're so great for the environment, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I hope y'all have so much fun. Have a bugtastic day. Enjoy <laughs> you the too. Rest of Utopia. Thank you so much. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oop. <laughs> Gotta watch out for the sidewalk. It's a little bit. Uh... Ah, look out for the squirting bug. Okay, how did you get squirted? A bombardier beetle. And right across is a meadow grasshopper. And then we have an emergency exit. European stag beetle. Uh, firefly. And of course, looks like red ants. Oh no, black ants. 
There's a black ant spear. I just said that. And what do we have here? Hello there. I have found a friend. You did? This is a lover grasshopper. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I love your vehicle, by the way. I have never seen a vehicle like that before, ever. I love it very much. I love your butterfly tattoo, too. <laughs> it is absolutely perfect for Bugtopia. Yeah. But pretty cool, huh? Yeah. This, this guy is called the lover grasshopper. Nope. Yep, there you go. A brave soul here, definitely. Some of them are a little scary, which I definitely understand that. All right. But hey, what look can I that. say? They're pretty awesome. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Lots of things to find here in Bugtopia. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the research assistants here. You're yes, I work under Dr. O. He's the one who shrunk you today. He's the one who shrunk you into the size of a bug Ooh. today. So I'm one of the research assistants going around Bugtopia, making sure all the bugs behave themselves and counting all the other bugs that I find, you know? This one looks like he's behaving himself. Yes, are you? Good, I want to make sure. You didn't <laughs> tend to take people's drinks, did you? Because sometimes, nope. especially the ants, take people's drinks. Ooh. So I want to make sure they didn't take, you know, your fun drinks, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, okay, good. We got fun drink right here. You do have a fun drink. Okay, good. So they didn't try to snatch it, I hope. No. Okay, good. And it's sweet, too. And it's sweet. Okay, you know what? Yeah, they would they, love it. They do like that. I know during Zoo Brews, that was definitely a really, that was kind of a rough night, because all the bugs were like, oh, look, drinks. You know, and then they were getting more uh, fun than they already are. So, uh, yes, or silly than they already were. So, wanted to make sure they're behaving, definitely. <laughs> that, now, that one you didn't capture in your web, did you? I did not. I am. I wish I could make my own webs. That'd be cool, just like Charlotte here. Ah. But no, I did not. I just found the guy and I was like, you know, and now he's on my hand. Oh. Kind of crawling around and just being a bug. You're not going to save him for later? No. No, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him go eventually. Okay. They're just kind of fun to crawl around and show people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're pretty cool. Apparently they're good for fishing. I didn't yeah. know that. Mm. Apparently people can catch them for fishing and bass fishing, apparently. Nice. I have no idea. Yes. Thanks so much for coming by. Well, yes. thank you. Please come by again. I always have stuff to talk about. <laughs> I do talk too much, but what can I say? I like things. I like bugs. I like people. <laughs> have a great day. Here we have a seven spotted ladybug. And she was actually, uh, I think, trying to be an orb weaver. Uh, a blue-eyed darner. Okay. <laughs> the Mexican red knee tarantula. Pretty big. And he's not smoking today. <laughs> okay, plants with a purpose. And that is Bugtopia. Going a little bit of a backward path here. Doesn't do too well on gravel, huh? And now to get unshrunk. Another great day, uh, but not at Bush Gardens. We're at Zoo Tampa. We have one more event that we're gonna check out, and it's the McCall Flyover. We've got about another 10 15 minutes, so stick around. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the 2 o'clock McCall Flyover presented by Breeze Airways. If you guys would like to join us and can hear me but can't see me, we are way over here at the Macau Flyover Podium. I'm going to be on your left if you're coming from the zoo entrance and your right if you're coming from behind Manatee Circle. Now, I did say fly over a second ago, meaning our birds will be flying up and around your heads. So if that is not your cup of tea, not a problem. Just head on into that Manatee Circle right over there or any of these offshoots of the circle it's still a great way to view our birds. But if you want them to pass right over you, standing in front of me right here, or along that outer ring, they're gonna pass right above you. We just ask that for the safety of our birds and for the safety of y'all, that we keep our hands, our phones, our cameras, anything and everything out of the air 
as our birds pass you by. Darn, I can't Very stick this up right here. <laughs> now, there are 17 different species of macaws that call Central and South American rainforest home. And in that forest, they have a very, very important job. They are what's known as seed dispersers. And so it's pretty much just a fancy way of saying they're really, really messy eaters. So while they are chowing down on their favorite things like fruits, berries, and nuts, they tend to drop a lot of that food onto the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's really we know. not ideal <laughs> for a place like our house, right? But in that forest, it is actually excellent because all of that dropped food has the potential to become future homes and future food for other animals in that rainforest. They not only spread it while they are eating, but also when they are going to the bathroom. <laughs> it might sound a little bit gross, but some of those seeds that they will acquire through eating those fruits will pass through their body, and while they are flying all around, the rainforest, they will actually be <coughs> spreading those seeds as well. So that is really excellent for all of those other animals like frogs, and monkeys, a lot of other birds that rely on all of that vegetation. It is really perfect that those birds are spreading all of those seeds all over the place. So in just a few minutes, we will be seeing our beautiful macaws come your way. Oh, yeah. Pausing just a moment until my coworker gets up here. She will be uh, up here to show you all about these birds. You guys seen macaws before? Yep. Fantastic. We have a lot of beautiful birds here at Zoo Tampa. It is very exciting. Ten more. We usually will have more folks. Over here. Hello, Darian. Nice to meet you. So we are very excited to introduce you to our birds, and I feel like I can hear them coming right now. Oh, wow. So of those 17 species of macaws, Tampa is home to five, and this afternoon we are joined by two. Closest to me is the blue and gold macaws, with that beautiful blue and lovely, lovely gold. And then in the center there, we have these scarlet macaws, those gorgeous red birds. That is Phoenix and Rose. And then we've got Azul, Capri, and Bailey, our blue and gold macaws. Hi, Baby. Hi, Go. <laughs> here at Zoo Tampa are safe and well cared for the same unfortunately cannot be said for their wild counterparts. Uh, macaws are cavity nesters, meaning that they nest on the insides of trees. So you can imagine a bird this big is going to need a pretty big tree to nest in. So they utilize large ancient trees that are around for a very, very long time. But due to habitat loss and deforestation, it is becoming a bit harder for these birds to find those trees. That might sound a little bit scary, but do not worry. Sioux Tampa is partnered with the Macaw Recovery Network, and they are based out of Costa Rica. They work hard every single day to help save this beautiful species by providing artificial nesting habitats, as well as raising wild chicks and releasing them back out into the wild to help boost those macaw population numbers. You guys may be wondering how you can help save this species too. You actually already have. Just by coming to Zoo Tampa today, you've not only helped to support all of our animals here at home, but you have also helped to support all of those conservation efforts that Zoo Tampa is partnered with, including the Macaw Recovery Network. So I'm going to give you a round of applause. Thank you guys so much for helping to save wild places and wild species. If you are looking for more ways to help save um, species while you are doing your grocery shopping or spring cleaning, Check out ZooTampa.org and click on ZT Saves. You're going to see a list of all of those conservation efforts that you have helped to support today, as well as tips and tricks that will help you save species while you are just at home. Well, I'm going to hop off the mic, but we'll stick around with our birds for a little bit longer. If you guys have any questions or would like to get a little closer for a picture, feel free. Um, 
we really are happy you all decided to come and join us and meet our birds today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> and I like how they jump over each other. Yeah. And that is the McCall flyover. Now we know why our birds are so messy. And that will do for us here at Zoo Tampa. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe down at the bottom there. Any last words there, dear? No. Okay. Just, uh, we had fun. Okay. And a talk. All righty. So yeah, we are gonna head on out with a good view of the macaws. We got the scarlet and the blue and gold. They are so beautiful. Let's just get up real close to them real quick. There's a species called the Spitz macaw. Have you ever seen Rio? Oh yeah, sure. Um, they are completely extinct in the wild. Um, so there are a couple of different species that are facing some population decline. Hi. How many years do they live? So they can live up to 80 years. Oh, wow. Yeah.